Hi folks, thanks for joining me again for another watercolour demo. This time I've used a, a photograph that I took yesterday in Sutton Park. Um, so we've got our little path there sweeping its way through, around these bushes, little figure there, framed by this big tree, bit of water there, a few reflections. So let me show you the photograph I've used for this. So I quite like this composition. There's our little path going right the way into the distance. You can just about see the water in the distance then. It's framed by this big tree on the left and these little bushes on the right. So let me show you the colours I've used. So we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, didn't use the alizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. So the six colours and then just a couple of brushes. Got large on Ranton Ake and a number three rigger. Quick book plug, this is volume 3 of watercolour painting made simple. I have got volume 4 in my possession now, so I've just got to proofread it and get it set up on Amazon. But for now this remains the most recent book I've done. Lots of step by step photographs to guide you through each painting. Each chapter's got its own painting, so that's available on Amazon. So let's first give the paper a bit of water. Right then. Let's go raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. I'm just going to work all the way down into the foreground. Get that lemon yellow, pick that colour up down there. Clean the brush, want a bit of ultramarine in the sky. So, clean brush, ultramarine, a little bit, not too much. I've just caught some of the green then, I'm going to worry too much about that. Right then. Let's just take out a few little clouds, if I can, actually, no, let's use a brush. I was going to use a tissue, but I'm going to use a brush, I think. Just a clean, dry brush, squeeze the water out, take it out on the tea towel. And then these will be the clouds that are just above the tree line, help the tree line stand out and also stop all the paint from dripping down the paper. So it's sort of two, two-fold benefit. So I'm going to go into the same colours, bit of raw sienna, bit of lemon yellow, bit of ultramarine. And then we've got those distant trees now. So I'm just going to try and vary it as I go across. And also, just about just about to see the water, so I'm just going to pull down just a, a little bit of a reflection. I'm just trying to vary those greens as I go across as well. And again, all the way across. Even though there's a big tree in the right hand foreground which will cover a little bit of this, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going. I'm trying to keep it level, as level as I can. Let's go a little bit towards a bit more ultramarine than I, than I intended on that one, that's all right. So that's our little tree line all the way across, just about to see the lake in the distance. And I'm going to clean the brush. Start off with a bit of, of raw sienna and burnt umber. And we're sort of just cutting just cut across now. Bit of light red in there as well. It really gives it a good boost. Bit of burnt umber. Right, well, let's clean the brush. I want to go back to some greens. I can see lots of grass there in the distance, looking at that photograph. So into the raw sienna, lemon yellow. Let's just lighten that a little bit. Let's just go around there. There's going to be some trees on the left hand side, so I don't know worry any more about that part of it. Now we'll sort of push it right up. A 
can just pull these down pretty quick. And a little bit of ultramarine just to darken some parts there. Little bits of shadow and things down in the bases. Let's clean the brush. We're going to go back to a nice clean colour. Back into that raw sienna, lemon yellow. And then while I've got that on the brush, and I'll just keep continuing down the paper there. A little bit of burnt umber down there, just working it up to the edge of this path, which I'll put in a sec. Trying to get a bit of variation in this foreground, just underneath where the tree is going to be. Before I go anymore, I just want to make sure this paper's flat. Let's just get it flat against the plywood I've got leaning against the easel. And I'll be ready to go again. But for now, I think I'm just going to clean the brush, get back to that light greeny colour again. Clean the brush. Get it off on the tea towel. Back into the lemon yellow. I'm just going to fill in these gaps here. I'll go over some of these little bits here as well. These a little bit smaller because they're a bit further away. I did them a little bit too big, so I'm just pulling across the base. Then just dab, 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 just for a little bit of texture in the ground. Right, let's put this path in. I'm um, just going to go a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue on there as well, I think. And then I'm just going to get the path and just sweep it very, very quickly. Round like that. Clean the brush. I'm going to push the grass now just up to the edge of this path. A bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. I'm just pushing the grass now up. Right up to the edge of the path. Also a bit on this side as well. Brambles and things down on the bases, just below these trees. Let's put the base in first. Um, and then above those, if I clean the brush again, back into some nice, some nice greens there again. So let's start off with the, with the lightest ones. She greens above there like that. Then a bit of ultramarine just to vary it slightly. A bit of Payne's grey, a few little shadowy areas down the base. A little bit of fingernail work, just see a few light coloured twigs and things coming up there. Let's switch to the rigger brush now. Populate that bush with a few more little twigs. Just want a nice, nice sharp edge. You know, I'm just gonna just 
just flicking up these little things and branches and twigs growing. Just very light touch. Back into those greens, just strengthen them a little bit. Right, I think I'll leave it at that for now. Actually, you get a few more darks underneath there. Oh, I'll stop filling me that bit now. Right, just make sure this is flat, and then I'm gonna stick that big tree on the right hand side. So I might need to just give it a quick dry first before I go any further. Um, quick dry with the air dryer. Do this tree so I could either use a rigger I might actually yes use the rigger I think it's, it's, it's quicker to do it with a hake but I do find that it looks slightly a little bit more natural with a rigger brush it takes a little bit longer but there's no rush so the base is about there and then we're sort of going up it'll take a few strokes a few reloads of the brush so that's going up there and it's, it's something like that a little bit thicker. There's another branch going, going off in that direction. Let's just get these a little bit done. Just keep reloading the brush. main trunks in first right and then what I'll do is I might squeeze some fresh paint out actually just use it straight out the tube because it'll go on nice and thick then let's just clean the brush squeeze the water out with your thumb and forefinger straight into the jar scuff it up on the tea towel It's a little bit brighter than it is in the, well actually I'll come back to that in a minute. Just work my way down. Cover this bit over there like that. Now let's take a bit of ultramarine. And it's all darken some of those bits. So I started off with the lights, then added a bit of ultramarine. Just bring that down somewhere, something like that. And there's also a little bit of a few green patches down there. the rigger brush and flick those up there like that
Right then, what I think I need, they're not, you can't actually see them in the, in the photo. Actually, I'll quick dry first. Two shadows in. So let's make a shadowy colour. So I'm going to clean the brush. Now it was quite a dull day yesterday when I took the photograph, so I'm going to have to make these up. So I'm just going to take a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue, mix them all together. bluey grey type of colour right in now where should we have the shadows coming from um, I think sort of coming across that way I think so if we first have a few shadows up here now sort of working the way across there I'm going straight across the path there as well. For some reason, this tree's going to need a shadow there. A few shadows amongst these. Darks across these as well. I'm going to put a person up there as well. I'm going to have a little figure in a minute. Oh, I think, is that enough shadow? I think from there. Let's give that a quick dry. few more darks I think. I want quite a strong paint. So rather than clean the brush again I've just just dried it on that tissue and I'm going to go into a bit of brown. I want very little water now and mainly paint on the brush. Yeah, I think I'll just, I'll fire that, I think. Give that a quick draw so I don't get my hand wet. I want a little figure up here, so I'm going to switch to the rigger brush. Right, there's quite 
getting this, keeping the scale. Mm. I'm wondering if this brush is going to be too big, but actually, no, let's make it a little bit bigger. The path sort of goes off. Dark little shadows coming off them as well. A quick dry. Just going to do just a little bit more. some of those tones that are coming from there. So I didn't want these tones just to stand out, I wanted just to try and match them somewhere just so they blended in a little bit better, if, you, if, if I'm explaining that very well. I think I'll... I think I'll call that one finished now before I mess about with it anymore. So all I'm going to do now is just pop my name down. Pop my name in the corner. Call that one finished, I think. So let's just stick a mount on it and see what it looks like. So here's our finished painting the mount. So if we have a, a, a compare it to the photograph, see how, see how it looks. You see the composition, I've kept the composition pretty similar. The only real thing that I've tried to change too much is try and get a bit more light in it. So I've just cast a few shadows coming across there from sort of left to right diagonally. So I started off with a very simple sky, simple ultramarine up there and then took a few clouds out to see where the tissue work was. Just to start, now tell a lie, I used the, the brush didn't I to do that. Um, so it also doubles as clouds, stops the paint from coming down and also helps the profile of the distant horizon trees to stand out better. Pulled the reflection down at the same time, tried to vary, it got lemon yellow. Ultramarine, bit of raw sienna in there as well as I work my way across where they disappear behind the tree. Then we got some light land just cutting across there, moving into a bit of sort of light red and burnt umber there, that sort of sort of brackeny type of stuff there. A few little shadows dotted about as so we come down right towards into the foreground area. Got the big tree there, put in with the rigger brush, a couple of layers just to get it on nice and dark. That goes all the way up to the neat paint, straight out the tube. That was the lemon yellow, the light bit. Then added a bit of ultramarine just to get a bit of variation in the leaves. Just used the dry out brush to, to uh, pop those on. Got some simple bushes and things growing up here. Scraped a few little twigs, branches in there, and then got some nice shadows coming straight across this path. The path that sort of sweeps its way round. But the word in the photograph, the figures were right in the distance, but I've brought them a little bit closer. There, and then down. A few more grasses and things, grasses and whatnot grown in the foreground. A few more shadows. A few little dots of light, light red as well, just to give a bit of colour. Little bursts of colour throughout the foreground. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Many thanks as always for your support. Best wishes. Very much appreciated. So keep practicing. Uh, remember all the books are on Amazon, paintings are on eBay. There's loads more videos. It's about 150 videos over on Patreon if you want to have a look at those. So keep practicing. Any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.